You know, folks, a few days ago at Microsoft Build, Sam Altman made some really, really intriguing statements about GPT-5 and more. There are two or three key statements that are pretty cool. So, folks, if you're interested in GPT-5, I think you absolutely have to watch the whole video. That said, let's not waste any more time and start with some clips from the Microsoft event with Sam. Obviously, great to see you, but developers have been such a core part of what's been happening this last year and a half. Um, there's millions of people building on the platform. What people are doing is totally amazing. And the speed of adoption and talent and figuring out what to build with all of this over what has really not been very long. Like when we put GPT-3 out in the API, uh, some people thought it was cool, but it was narrow where the use of it happened. And seeing what people have done with GPT-4, and seeing now what's happening with GPT-4.0, even though it's new and hasn't been out that long, uh, is quite remarkable. I've never seen a technology get adopted so quickly in such a meaningful way. Uh, the, what people are building, how people are finding out how to do things that we never even thought of possible, yeah. which is why it's always great to have an API. Uh, that's been very cool to see. Yeah, and I, I think you know what you just said is like one of the most important points to me. Like there, there's a version of AI that could have existed that is, uh, you know, like a bunch of smart people like building, uh, you know, things at extraordinary scale, and then just building it into a bunch of products where everybody gets to passively use them. Like the the really brilliant thing that you all have done is like taken the exact same set of things and like decided to make it available to like any developer who's able to sign up for an API key. Yeah, we, we try to be really thoughtful about what makes a good API for this. There's going to be all kinds of ways people can use this, but the more this can just be a layer that gets built into every product, every service, uh, the better. And we've tried to make it such that if you want to add intelligence to whatever you're doing, uh, any product, any service, we make that very easy. Yeah, and like it, again, I think the progress has been stunning. So, you know, I, I think, you know, the, the setup for uh, like, introducing you onto the stage here was uh like, i saw that big blue whale <laughs> yeah it, like you know you're you're making good use of the whale sized computer right now and so like I, I without like getting too specific which we can't be obviously like what are the category of yeah. things that people should be expecting over the next you know k months so the, the most important thing and this sounds like the most boring obvious trite thing i can say but i think it's actually much deeper than it sounds the most important thing is that the models are just gonna get smarter, generally across the board. There'll be a lot of other things too, which we can talk about, but if you think about what happened from GPT-3 to 3.5 to 4, it just got smarter. Yep. And you could use it for all these things. It got a little more robust, it got much safer, uh, both because the model got smarter and we put much more work into building the safety tools around it. Um, it got more useful, but the underlying capability, this amazing emergent property of like we actually are seeming to increase the general capability of the model across the board, that's gonna keep happening. And the, the jump that we have seen in the utility that a model can deliver with each of those half-step jumps in smartness, it's quite significant each time. So as we think about the next model and the next one and the incredible things that developers are going to build with that, I think that's the most important thing to keep in mind. Uh, also, speed and cost really matter to us. So with GPT-40, we were able to bring the price down by half and double the, the speed. Um, new modalities really matter. Uh, voice mode has been actually a genuine surprise for me in how much I like the new voice mode. And I, when people start integrating that, I think that'll matter. But, but it's the overall intelligence that'll be coming that I think matters the most. So you, for a while now, have been one of the most successful startup investors uh, in the world. Um, and like now you are one of the most successful uh, CEOs of one of the most important companies in the world. And so you've got a room full of developers here, you know, like I think there are 5,000 people in the room and there are about 200,000 people uh, online right now. Um, what's your advice to them is like they think about how to spend their precious time given what's happening in the world. Like what, what's your advice? Two, two things. Number one, uh, this is probably the most exciting time to be doing building a product, doing a startup, whatever it is, uh, that we have seen at least since the mobile boom um, and probably, I would say, since the internet. And maybe even bigger than that, we don't know yet. Yeah. Um, but the, the big opportunities, the big, the, you know, the ability to sort of build something new and really kind of like change the landscape, that comes at the platform shift times. And we haven't had a platform shift in a while. And this looks like it's really, truly a platform shift. Uh, and so, 
My biggest piece of advice is like, this is a special time and take advantage of it. This is like not the time to delay what you were planning to do or wait for the next thing. Like, this is a special moment uh, and a few years where a lot of stuff is gonna happen and a lot of like great new things are gonna get going. Um, the second thing also about platform shifts is when the mobile phone revolution started or really got going like 2008, 2009, you would see people say, um, we're a mobile company, you know, we have a mobile app. And then only a few years later, no one said they were a mobile company because it was like table stakes. An, an amazing new technology, which I would bias, but we'll put AI in that category. Uh, it doesn't get you out of the hard work of building a great product or a great company or a great service. Um, you still have to do it. AI alone is a new enabler, but it does not automatically break the rules of business. And so you can use this as like a new thing to do, but you still have to figure out how you're gonna build enduring value in whatever you're doing. Um, and it's easy to lose sight of that in the excitement of the gold rush. Yeah, so w one last thing before we let you go. So, you know, you and I and like members of your team and members of the Microsoft team have been doing really a, an extraordinary volume of work over the past uh, year and a half, two years thinking about safe deployment of an awful lot of AI capability, like everything from, you know, APIs and developer tools to end products. Uh, and, you know, I, I think we, you know, have accumulated a really interesting volume of experience, like experience that's sort of hard to get if you're not doing deployments at this scale. Um, so I, I, you know, and I think you just mentioned something that's like really, really interesting, like part of, uh, you know, part of the interesting and surprising progression of capabilities of these models means that they're more useful yeah. in like helping to like make AI systems safer. So I, I don't know whether you had some thoughts you wanted to share there as well. You know, when we first developed this technology, we spent a lot of time talking about, all right, we've made this thing, it's cool. Are we ever gonna be able to get it to an acceptable level of robustness and safety? And now we kind of take that for granted with GPT-4. Um, you know, if you use it, it's far from perfect. We have more work to do, but it is generally considered robust enough and safe enough for a wide variety of uses. And that took an enormous amount of work across both teams and fundamental research. Like when we started this, we're like, we've got this thing, we've got this language model. It looks like kind of impressive and kind of not. And even then, how are we going to like get it aligned and um, what, it, what does it mean? You know, what is it going to take to be able to deploy it? The number of different teams we've had to build up uh, to go from research and creation of the model to safety systems, to figuring out policy, to how we do the monitoring. Um, that's a huge amount of work, but it's, it's necessary uh, to be able to deploy these and use them. Like, you know, when you take a medicine, you wanna know it's gonna be safe. When you use an AI model, you wanna know it's gonna be robust and behave the way you want. And have been super proud of the work the teams have done together. And I think it's amazing how fast this much work has happened and that we can all now use this and say, oh yeah, it basically, it basically works. As the models get more powerful, there will be many new things we have to figure out as we move towards AGI. Um, the level of complexity and I think the new research that it'll take will increase. I'm sure we'll do that together. But uh, we view this as a gate on being able to put these things out yeah. in the world, which we really want to do. Yeah, it's definitely table stakes. So thank you so much thank for, you. Uh, for being with us here today. Like, thank I really appreciate your time. Uh, it's awesome to hear from you. Awesome. Okay, folks, what do you think? I genuinely think that Sam said some really, really cool things. I mean, he highlighted how AI models like GPT-4 and GPT-4 are getting smarter and smarter. And this growth hasn't hit a saturation point yet. Not to mention Kevin Scott's statement, and I quote, we are nowhere near the point of diminishing marginal returns on how powerful we can make AI models as we increase the scale of compute. Moreover, Sam Altman referred to new capabilities of GPT-5 that we still can't know anything about and which, frankly, I find hard to imagine. You know, folks, I also found it a bit odd the moment Sam Altman mentioned the voice engine, maybe because of the little scandal that recently happened with Scarlett Johansson. For those that might not know, the actress recently stated that Sam had offered her to be the voice of the current system, ChatGPT 4.0. However, Scarlett declined. But according to the actress, nine months after her refusal, some of her friends contacted her, pointing out the extreme similarity of her voice to that of the new voice engine, Sky. What do you think, folks? I mean, I think this is a very, very delicate matter. That said, let me know in the comments what you think about Sam Altman's interview at Microsoft Build. What do you think about the direction Sam and OpenAI are taking? And 
Most importantly, subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you found the video helpful. See you in the next one, folks. You all take care.